This video is for entertainment and educational purposes only. Hey guys, Big Paul here. Today we are going to talk about how to eat a, like a bodybuilder. I don't think a lot of people understand this and really I've talked about it before and it's just hard to understand unless you've experienced it and followed a structured bodybuilding diet before. The difference between a gym bro and a bodybuilder, really what separates the two is nutrition. And this is a hard fact for a lot of people to swallow. They don't want to hear it. I hear a lot of guys say training is the most important thing. Uh, but I, I've seen it over and over and over again with nutrition is the most important thing. I take guys that have been stuck in the gym, haven't made any progress. I get them on a structured diet and they transform over fucking night every time. Uh, you can train as hard as you want. <clears throat> you can take as much gear as you want. But if your diet sucks, you aren't going to make progress. It's just the way it is. There's an old saying in bodybuilding that you can't out train a shitty diet. And that is 100% true. Today, I'm going to go through the basics of how to eat like a bodybuilder in just one second. <laughs> All right, so first things first. I mean, I think everybody sort of gets what ma you know what the macros are, but we, we should go through them and discuss how they apply to a bodybuilding diet. Uh, so we, you know, obviously we all know that we have carbs, proteins, and fat, and I think people sort sort of have an idea of how they are applied to a diet, but misunderstand how to leverage them properly and how to use them in a bodybuilding style diet to enhance physiques. So. Protein, you know, at a basic level, you know, we're, we're talking about protein. It has four calories per gram, roughly. It's I forget the exact number, but it's 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 close to four calories. Uh, studies have shown, in order to stimulate muscle protein synthesis, I, I've seen multiple studies, and these were done on on non-enhanced trainers. I think it was around zero point seven grams per pound of body weight. If you're an enhanced trainer, you have an enhanced protein metabolism, and we'll play it safe, and I usually run somewhere between um, 0 0.7 on a high-carb day to 1 gram on a high-carb day to up to 1.25 grams on um, regular and low days, maybe even a little bit more, but I don't think you need to run much more than that. There's the old-school thought process that you need to eat a shit ton of protein to get big. There is only so much muscle protein synthesis that you can generate. Um, and any protein that you eat in excess of that just is really fucking expensive carbs. It, it's more than likely you're going to piss it out or it's going to get converted through gluconeogenesis into carbohydrates. So really you're wasting your money when you, you're eating the old school philosophy of eating two grams of, uh, per pound of body weight. Plus it's hard on your digestion. I think that's why you see a lot of those early 2000 bodybuilders that were extremely bloated and blown out it was from all the fucking protein they were eating. And I, I don't know how you put that much meat down without getting bloated and blown out. And guys now are eating less protein, more carbs, and have a leaner look. Um, uh, protein, with protein, uh, we need complete protein sources that contain um, the right balance of amino acids, including essential amino acids. Um, and I hate to break it to people that are vegans or vegetarians. It is really difficult to meet your protein requirements for, um, physique optimization on a vegetarian or physique or vegetarian or, um, or, um, a vegan diet. It, it's almost damn near impossible to, to get in your protein requirements. I, I mean, it can be done. Uh, but your calories get so high because you have to mix and match plant sources and it's difficult to optimize your body composition. You're essentially taking away an entire macro group and tying uh, your hand behind your back by not eating animal protein. If you want to do it, I don't judge you. You know, I, I, It's whatever you want to do. But for physique optimization, it's, it's suboptimal. It, it doesn't work that well. Uh, you can argue with me all day long about it, but I've never seen a vegan bodybuilder on the Olympia stage. It just hasn't happened. 
Uh, proteins are used for uh, cellular repair and construction. Um, it's uh, four cal uh, carbs. We have, again, four calories per gram. Uh, no minimum requirement of carbs. You got to remember with carbs, are only there is no essential carbs, so we don't have to have carbs in our diet. Carbs are just a fuel source. Uh, they are used for fueling activity. They are used by the brain. Glucose is used by the brain uh, for energy. Uh, they are non-essential, uh, but they are critical, in my opinion, for fueling uh, strength-related uh, activities like lifting weights and for optimizing physique. You can go keto if you want, but you are not going to have that big bubbly look that uh, bodybuilders have on stage. And even the guys that say they do keto that are in bodybuilding, uh, I see people say they do keto on contest prep. It's not really keto. They usually do a reload day once a week. That's not keto. That's carb cycling. Okay, so you're eating high carbs one day and then low carbs the rest of the week. That's carb cycling. Uh, you're still eating carbs. Otherwise, you'd be flat as a pancake and you're going to look like shit on stage. Um, so, uh, that's not to say that, uh, keto doesn't have a place in other, other applications. I'm not trying to shit all over keto. If somebody is severely obese or struggling with glucose sensitivity or things like that, keto can be a tool that is used for, um, getting people, uh, back in shape and, and recovering glucose sensitivity. But for physique enhancement, if you want to be a competitor, it is suboptimal. And once again, when we're eating for bodybuilding, it's about optimize, optimizing our nutrition. It's about optimization. Um, fats. Uh, so, so fats, there are essential fats, uh, but I have found that most Americans vastly overeat fats. I don't have this problem with my clients that are overseas. I get this, there's this notion here in the U.S. that you have to eat a shit ton of fat, and I don't... I don't know where people get this from. Um, I, I don't have this issue with my overseas clients. I don't have my issue with my overseas clients eating uh, high fat cheat meals. It's only here in the U.S. that people do that. They feel like they need to eat donuts and cake and pizza and shit like that. Um, and, and people talk about, well, you need fats to survive for hormone production. If you look at the uh, studies on it, you need very minimal amounts of EFAs for that. Somewhere in around 0 0.03 to 0 0.06 grams per day of EFAs are required for basic metabolic processes. So that is almost nothing. So we're talking about uh, a 200-pound bodybuilder, like 12 grams, something like that. Um, it, you know, so it's 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 almost nothing. Um, and saturated fats, you do not need. A ton of saturated fats in your diet. People vastly overeat saturated fats, and that's why they end up with high LDL numbers. Usually, high LDL numbers on blood work is from overeating uh, fats. I see it all the time with guys that are running keto diets, or they say they're keto. I don't think they're truly keto. I see their blood work, and then their LDLs through the fucking roof, and it's from all the saturated fats that they're eating. Um, and for bodybuilding, if we're running a high carbohydrate diet to optimize. Uh, strength and uh, physique enhancement in, in our um, nutrition plan, overeating saturated fat is just going to make you fat. Uh, you, your, body, your body's not going to use that fat for anything other than stored energy. So excess saturated fat when you're eating a high carbohydrate, high protein diet for bodybuilding is just going to make you fat. I think a lot of times I, I hear dudes all the time talk about how insulin made them fat. I don't think insulin made them fat. I think their diet made them fat. They're eating way too much saturated fat. It's not the insulin that made them fat. It's the saturated fat. Um, so uh, EFAs and fat are used for cellular repair, vitamin absorption, metabolic function, and energy. You do need some, okay? I'm not saying it's zero. Um, I have done zero fat diets, you know, or, or just to get body fat off, done some extreme things with zero fat diets on some low days before and you feel like absolute dog shit when you're in the one zero fats. So you do need some, you don't need as much as you think. All right. For meals, guys, meal frequency, meal structure, four to six meals a day are optimal. More, I, I am a fan of more frequent meals. There is this old school bodybuilding bro myth that more frequent meals increased metabolism. That has been proven over and over again in studies to be untrue. 
Um, but I will tell you that more frequent meals serves two purposes uh, as far as hunger goes. Uh, when you're uh, in the off season and you're bulking, the sheer quantity of food that you're eating, it's hard to get down that much food in four meals. You have to eat more meals just to get it down. Uh, on contest prep, you're constantly fucking hungry. So when you break it up into smaller meals and put food volume in with vegetables and things like that, that keeps you full and keeps you from doing stupid shit like putting your face into a bowl of ice cream. Um, and also, uh, another thing too, uh, you need a steady flow of amino acids in your bloodstream if you want to grow. If we're going to stimulate muscle protein synthesis, we need protein present at all times. So these people that do the intermittent fasting, uh, and I, you know, look, I get the health benefits of it, but we're not optimizing health here. We're optimizing muscle growth. Intermittent fasting is shit for muscle growth. <laughs> If there are no amino acids and no proteins present in your blood, what do you think is going to happen when your body says, hey, it's time to grow. It's time to generate muscle protein synthesis. Fucking nothing. Nothing's going to happen. So you won't grow if you're fasting and you have no amino acids present. I don't care. I hear these arguments about it stimulates growth hormone production. Growth hormones won't do shit if there's no protein uh, present. It's like sending construction workers to a construction site with no wood and no bricks. Um, so we want an even amount of protein at each meal. Usually we spread our protein evenly throughout the day. Uh, we want our meals no closer than two hours apart and no further apart than four hours. So however we structure our meal plans. Um, I found that two is about as close. I can jam them together and digest my food any closer than that. I don't, I haven't digested my previous meal and it also just depends on what I eat. Sometimes thing, heavier things like red meat potatoes when i'm eating a lot of vegetables i i need more more space between meals so macro allo allocation how we are going to allocate our macros within the diet we have the workout window the workout window is our highest energy demand time so if we're thinking about this logically if we're going to be expending the most energy throughout the day and our muscles run on glucose, AKA carbohydrates. When does it make the most sense to eat more carbs? Around the workout, right? So in the workout window, pre, post and intro, we want, that's where we want to stack the majority of our daily carbs in that window. Um, that's why guys take insulin during that time to force even more carbs in. Um, so uh, those meals generally we want to keep low fat, high carb we don't want to mix carbohydrates and fats in a high insulin state and the reason for that is because your body is going to prioritize the carbohydrates as fuel and it says hey i don't need these fats for anything so what happens with the fats that it doesn't need they get stored as body fat so you do not need fats around your workout i hear guys arguing about you know, you need fats to slow down the, 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 the digestion of the carbohydrates. If your carbs are really low, that may be the case. But in the off season, when we're packing in a shit ton of carbs and we're doing an intra shake with carbs in it, you're going to have plenty of carbs to fuel uh, things. You don't need fats in there to slow anything down. All the fats are going to do is get stored as fat. Uh, we also want some essential amino acids. Make sure we're getting quality protein around our workout win window for uh, tissue breakdown and mu muscle protein synthesis. Um, uh, on off days, you don't, you're not doing anything. So what do you think you need to do with your carbohydrates when you're off from the gym? You drop them. You don't need that many carbs on off days. I found when you drop much lower than hundred grams of carbs, you start feeling like shit, at least for dudes. Um, you know, you, you're kind of in this, this, gray state where you're not quite in ketosis but you don't have enough glucose to fuel your brain and then you just get lethargic and you feel like ass um so on on one well, uh you know depending on the size of the bodybuilder i you know i usually drop the carbs pretty low on the low days um on um higher carbs on on High, a high output day so if you're working out hard or you you have something going on you eat more carbs on those days 
on the lower days, you eat more fat, less carbohydrates. Um, if you're trying to lose body fat, uh, carbs are the wild card. If we're trying to gain weight, we move the carbs up. If we're trying to lose fat, we move the carbs down. They are our wild card in the diet. They're usually the first thing we add and the first thing we take away when we're trying to gain weight and when we're trying to lose weight. Protein sources. So for protein sources, I think this is an area where most gym bros fuck up. This is where they fuck up their diet. They say, well, I'm eating like a bodybuilder. I'm eating meat and rice. Well, they're eating the fattiest, shittiest cuts of meat all day long with the rice and what did we establish if you're eating high carbohydrate and high fat? What happens to those fats? They just get stored as fat. Excess carbohydrates can be stored as glycogen. They can be burned as fuel. Um, and they can be used by the brain for energy. So they have a mul multiple pathways that they can be used uh, without violating thermodynamics. Fat, excess fat, either gets burned as energy or it's stored as body fat, one or the other. Your body always prioritizes carbohydrates first and fats get used second. That's why in keto, if you want to burn fats, you have to remove all the carbohydrates for keto to work. So in this situation with your meat, if you're doing the typical bodybuilding meat and rice, meat and potatoes diet, you want to keep your fats as low as possible in your meat. This is where dudes fuck up. I see guys eat chicken thighs instead of chicken breast. I know chicken breast sucks and it's dry as fuck. I see guys eating salmon. Um, it's got a shit ton of fat in it instead of white fish. I see guys eating ribeyes instead of 95% ground beef or sirloins. I see guys eating shit tons of whole eggs and drinking whole milk and doing stupid shit like that. Um... Uh, so, you know, the things we want, want for our protein sources, primary protein sources that I put in my diets are 95% lean ground beef, lean steak, cuts of steak, chicken breast primarily, it's the primary protein source, white fish, um, eggs, usually it's a six to one uh, yolk to egg white uh, ratio. You just have to be careful with eggs though, because a lot of people have uh, sensitivities to eggs. I see a lot of dudes that it, it ends up making them gassy and upsets their stomach. So if you tolerate eggs, you can eat them. If not, then skip them out. Uh, shrimp, that's another one you need to be careful with. While low in fat, shrimp tend to be high in cholesterol. So if you have issues with cholesterol, it's something to keep an eye on. I know there's an argument that uh, shrimp does not raise LDL, uh, but still something to be aware of. Protein powder, I know people think I shit all over protein powder. A protein powder just needs to be used sparingly. I, some people treat eating protein powder like it's their full-time job. And they buy the shittiest quality protein powder that they can get. Literally, protein powder is the waste product from when they make uh, <laughs> cheese and other milk products. It is it is the sh garbage that's left over. And some enterprising person figured out, hey, we can bottle this up and sell it to, pro uh, to bodybuilders. Now, there are quality protein powders out there. If you want to get a good high quality whey isolate. It is something that you can use in spot duty and diets. Um, uh, the only, honestly, the only protein powder out there that I trust, trust this is not a plug. I, I make no money from these guys. It's true nutrition. Um, they're the only protein powders out there that I, I would even trust. The only protein powder I use in my diets. Uh, I'll occasionally have some protein powder. I just use it in a pinch if I can't get a meal down. But ideally, you should be eating meats, lean meats. But... Um, you know, if you need a good low-fat protein source, a quality protein powder, it makes sense. A lot of people have uh, intolerances to protein powders, so that is something to be aware of. Uh, protein powders upset stomachs. I, I see a lot of guys get upset stomachs, and they're farting all day long, and they think that's normal. Having farts all day long is not normal. That means you're not digesting your food. Fat sources, we want, as we have established before, we want to keep those saturated fats as low as possible. They really don't serve much of a purpose in a bodybuilding diet. We're, we're not in keto, so we don't need them for energy, and they aren't really used in any other metabolic processes uh, that much. Um, and they're most likely just going to be stored as body fat and yank up your lipids. Um, so... Keep those out of your diet. We can use, I, you know, I'm a little more aggressive with EFAs. I put a fair amount of EFAs in a diet, bodybuilding diet, probably more than what you need. Uh, but we keep our fat sources to things like olive oil, macadamia nut oil, avocado oil, 
nuts and nuts, butters, avocados. Stay away from butter and vegetable oils. I don't know why, guys. I've talked to a bunch of dudes that I've trained that, that tell me, you know, I'm eating grass-fed butter, and they somehow think that that's fucking better. Um, it's still saturated fat. <laughs> so it might taste better, um, but it's still mostly saturated fat. Uh, for the most part, uh, it's it's high in saturated fat. I, you know, my, I don't I don't know the exact breakdowns of the profiles on it, but it's not the same as drinking olive oil. Um, so we we butter tastes great. It, it's it's all right for a treat once in a while, but that is a cheat meal, guys. Carb sources off off season is different than contest prep. For our call, our carb sources in the off season, our goal is to get down as much food as we can. Without getting fat. So we want our carb sources to be easily digestible and easy to get down. So primarily in the off season, I stick with rice and cream of rice. Uh, maybe it's some occasionally some fruit and breakfast cereal. And that's pretty much it. Maybe maybe the fat-free candy here and there on um, high days. Something like some gummy bears that, that are made out of glucose. Um, but otherwise, uh, I save the oats. I save the fibrous, the brown rice. I save... Uh, potatoes and shit like that for contest prep they are denser they are more filling they're uh, you know i i challenge you to eat enough potatoes in the off season to to put on weight or enough oats uh you'll be shitting your pants and bloated the fuck up so it's hard to get those down in the off season if you're eating enough food so in the off season we want to eat the easier to get down carbs on contest prep we want things to keep us full that are more fibrous um, so primarily in the off season, rice, cream of rice, that's pretty much what I stick to with my carb sources. All right. For fruits and vegetables and people always ask me about fruits and vegetables. They're like, my like, Paul, you don't eat, you don't eat vegetables. What, what the fuck's going on? I tell you, uh, I fucking hate vegetables, but <laughs> I, I know, I know it's, it's terrible. Uh, but when you're in the off season, you're eating so much food volume, it is almost impossible to add any vegetables to it. It really is. And it really fucks up my digestion. I'm not ready to eat my next meal if I put a bunch of vegetables in it. I know that's not optimal for health, but we are not trying to maximize health here. We are trying to optimize our physique. I usually will have a serving or two of vegetables a day in the off season. That's about all I can tolerate. Um, and then I supplement in a veggie powder um, I usually I usually get some sort of raw veggie powder to 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 take uh, during contest prep. Eat all the vegetables you want. Um, that helps keep you full, helps keep you satiated. So contest prep is more fibrous foods. Uh, off season is less fibrous foods. Um, typically, I will because I'm eating less fiber during the day in the off season. I will supplement with a fiber supplement at the end of the night uh, before I go to bed. Usually, I'll take something like Metamucil um, to get my fiber in to keep keep the colon clean. Um, contest prep, we, you know, I, in the off season, I do eat some fruit, not a ton. You know, I'll have a banana here and there or an apple here and there, some blueberries. I like blueberries, oranges, shit like that. Um, during contest prep, we drop those because they're high sugar um, and they're not very dense. They're not very filling. Uh, so we want more filling um, food, um, more dense uh, food in, in, in the contest prep. So things like I'll eat oats, I'll eat, you know, salads, I'll eat, you know, more, more vegetables during, during contest prep. All right, guys, that's about it. I will remind you once again, eating like a bodybuilder is not about optimizing health. So guys that are coming at me and saying it's not healthy, I know it's not the most healthy way to eat. This is not what we're trying to do here. We are trying to maximize our physique and get the most out of our physique. If you keep the saturated fats low and you supplement the fiber in, you can do it relatively healthy. If I were trying to live a long time, I probably would do some intermittent fasting and eat a low carbohydrate diet. Uh, if I'm trying to win a bodybuilding contest, that is not optimal. So this is about optimizing for bodybuilding. This is not about longevity. All right, guys, uh, let me know what you think in the comments section below. And I really appreciate each and every one of you. Thanks for watching. For coaching or consultations, head over to www.anabolicbodybuilding.com to book your spot today. I can help you with optimizing hormones, fat loss, 
muscle gain, physique, athletic performance, nutrition, and health. For more information, shoot me an email at bigp3rd at gmail.com.